In this video, I'm going to show you everything you need to know to get started using keyframes in Adobe Premiere Pro. I'm going to show you what are keyframes, how to actually use them, and uh, what are they good for. So, hope you're going to enjoy this video. My name is Vince, and let's get right into it. All right, so first of all, what is a keyframe? Well, a keyframe is a frame used to indicate the beginning or the end of a change to a parameter. Now, I think that sounds a little bit complicated. So here is what it is in real life. A keyframe is a point in time where you set a certain parameter on your clip. And then if you add, for example, a second parameter, it's going to make the change between those two parameters over time. But it's easier for me to actually show you how it works than to try to explain it to you in scientific terms. So as you can see, I have this little ball here on my screen or this circle. And let's say I wanted this to go from the left side of the screen to the right side of the screen over this four second period of time. Well, here is how you can do that. You want to first right here, come to effect controls. And if you don't have this right here, either go up to the top to window and make sure that it's uh, clicked for you right here or make sure you come here uh, to your Essentials Workspaces panel. Now here, I first want to turn on the toggle animation button, which is this little stopwatch right here. So I'm going to press that right in the beginning of this clip and you can see it already added a keyframe for me here in the beginning. And I want to change the position uh, to the left side of the screen. Now, I am going to go ahead and go to around the end of this clip now. And here, I'm going to click here on add keyframe, okay? And now it added another keyframe here, as you can see, and I can move it to the right side of the screen here with my position. And now if I play this back, it goes slowly from the left side of the screen to the right side of the screen. And just like that, you made an animation. You can also move these keyframes around if you want to. So for example, if I wanted this animation to be faster, I could move this second keyframe closer to the first one. And now if I play this back, it goes to the right side of the screen a lot faster. Now, if you wanted to make this animation a little bit smoother, one pro tip that you can use is you can right click on the first keyframe, come here to temporal interpolation, and then here you want to click on ease out. And now on the second one, you want to click on again, temporal interpolation and then ease in. Now, if we play this back, it looks quite a lot smoother and it just has a little bit more of a dynamic feel to it. So what can you actually do with keyframes aside from uh, animating the position of something, for example? Well, you can do a bunch of other things as well. Let's say uh, I have this text right here and I want it to uh, make it go, you know, small to big. I could also animate the scale of the, uh, the text. So for example, let's just say I'm gonna, you know, uh, go to the beginning of it, put the scale, to let's say 80% and then I'm going to um, change the center point here uh, to make sure my animation is going to be nice. I'm going to move here for example and I will change the scale to 100 and you can see now my text goes from being smaller to being uh, larger and I can also make this you know faster animation if I put these really close to each other. You can use keyframes on pretty much all the different properties of a certain clip, layer or even you can adjust the volume of a song. So for example, if on this, I wanted to adjust the rotation of it as well, I can come here to the beginning uh, and maybe I don't want to have any rotation here yet. And then over time here, I want to turn the rotation uh, to whatever, let's just say uh, like seven degrees. And you can see now it's uh, scaling up and also uh, it's uh, turning and rotating at the same time. So that is pretty much it. You can also use uh, keyframes to do things like, uh, for example, zooming in or using a dynamic zoom on footage. So let's say I have this cool little B-roll here of this, uh, you know, snowy village. I can come to the beginning of this. I can click here on scale and I can, you know, start scaling this up a little bit uh, to let's say 115. And now I have a bit more of a dynamic movement in here. So I use this technique all the time for things like B-roll. And you can also even animate um, the opacity of a clip. So for example, if you want it to go from black to full brightness, uh, if you don't have anything on the red, you know, you can just make uh, the opacity here on the beginning zero and then come up here and then put it at 100. And by adding a keyframe in the beginning at zero and adding a keyframe here at 100, uh, you can see it slowly goes from, you know, fully black to nice and bright. We just created two animations at the same time here, right? One of them is um, the kind of like opening 
from black to full brightness and then also the slow zooming in effect. These are some very basic ways you can use keyframes and by adding these small little animations to your videos and things of that nature, you can add a lot of extra flavor to your clips. Now one common beginner mistake that I see with a lot of editors is for example, if they are adding keyframes to your clip and uh, maybe they are adjusting the positioning as well, uh, you want to make sure you never have empty uh, parts of your clip anywhere because it just looks really unprofessional because yeah I see some people would add something like this right and uh, they would have a gap at somewhere in the image so whenever you are using keyframes or anything like that always make sure that your footage is still filling up the entire screen and also use temporal interpolation uh, and the ease in and ease out functions to make your animations a little bit nicer and smoother. So that is it, keyframing for beginners. I hope this was helpful for you and hope it helped you understand this concept a little bit more because I remember that when I got started, it was really confusing to me. There's so much more that you can do with keyframing as well. If you guys want me to make a part two of this, let me know in the comment section down below. And if you are interested in learning professional content creation and you want to make more amazing YouTube videos, thumbnails, grow a channel, and in general, just master social media content creation, both in Adobe Premiere Pro and Photoshop. Check out my personal masterclass in the description below, where I teach you in step-by-step -step long uh, lessons. And also we do um, bi-weekly group calls where I give you feedback directly on your edits so you can improve them faster. In general, we just have an amazing community and uh, I'm really happy with how it's growing. So yeah, check out my masterclass in the description if you're interested in mastering content creation. And I will see you guys in the next one.